It's David Williams again, and these are exciting times. Not only are you going to learn about ideal and non-ideal pulses and flip-flops, but this is also my first HD video. Um, so not 1080p or anything like that. I'm filming it in 1280 by 720 mode. Uh, it's about the best that I can get the settings for for on my computer. For some reason, I wasn't able to figure out the exact right settings to be able to do this before. But I've got it, and we'll see how it goes. So, these, this idea of ideal and non-ideal ideal pulses, well, I guess it's not exactly an idea, although I guess ideal pulses are, are ideal pulses are just sort of a theoretical idea for what a pulse should look like. So if we're looking at a pulse, and this is just any signal, so here we've got the amplitude of the pulse, so a high amplitude, you know, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, whatever, is going to be typically a 1, and a low low voltage, zero volt is going to be a zero. A pulse is going to look something, an ideal pulse should look something like this. At the time that it's supposed to go high, it immediately goes high, stays high at exactly the voltage that it needs to be to represent a one. The time that it goes low, it goes immediately goes low. It takes no time to go from a low to a high and no time to go from a high to a low. So this is roughly an ideal pulse. You know, I didn't draw quite right, but you get the idea. But in reality, pulses don't do that. They are going to take a finite amount of time to go from a low to a high. So a, an actual pulse may look something like this. Starts off low, and then it's going to take some time to ramp up to a high may stay at that high for for whatever time it's supposed to be at, at the high and then it's going to take a finite amount of time for it get, to get down to a low again. Now on this non-ideal pulse there's a few things that we could measure. One thing that we can measure is how long it takes to go from a low to a high and usually what we do is we measure at the from the 10 percent point when is that 10 percent of the max up to the 90 percent point when it gets to 90% of the max. So how long does it take to go from a, a low to a high is called the rise time, which we're going to designate with T, little tr. So that tr is the rise time. So a pulse, one of the non-idealities non of a pulse that we have, might have to recognize is the rise time. On the other side, how long does it take to go from a high, at the 90% mark again, down to a low, 10% mark. And that period of time, it may not be the same as how long it took to go from a low to a high, and we designate it the fall time. The fall time, how long it takes to go from a high to a low. Now, something else we could recognize in here, how long is this pulse? How long does it stay high? And usually the way we measure the, that, that time, I change to green here, it's from the 50% mark to the 50% mark. How much time does it stay at that? And so that we can call the pulse width. Call that TW for the pulse width. How long it's high for. You could do the same thing for a for a, a low to a uh, low pulse as well, you could figure out what the pulse width for that low pulse is, as well as the the rise time and the fall time. Now, a few other pieces of terminology related to pulses before we move on to some non-idealities of flip flops. Now, I could re I'm just going to redraw my graph here and redraw a pulse. I think I do two types of pulses. Uh, Okay, so here's, it doesn't matter if this is ideal or non-ideal pulse. John Moore is an ideal type of pulse. This edge here, it can, we have several names for it. We can call it the rising edge, because it's going from a low to a high. We could also call it the leading edge, because it's the first edge to occur in this pulse. You know, the two pulses in the pulse, this is the leading edge, and this, this is the first edge, this is the second edge, so this is the leading edge. And this one is, over here, is the trailing edge. And since it's a pulse going from a, or this edge is going from a high to a low, 
This is also called the falling edge. So each one of these edges can have two names. But let's contrast this to another situation over here where we had a positive pulse over there on, on this example. But what about if you have a negative pulse? So the pulse is high, goes low for a period of time, and then it goes high again. Well, this is the edge that occurs first, so this edge here is still the leading edge. It's still the leading edge, but at the same time, it's the, the edge that's going from a high to a low, so it's also the falling edge. Over here, this is the second pulse to occur, so this is the trailing edge. There's the trailing edge, but it's also it's also an edge that's going from a low to a high, so it's also the rising edge. So the first edge to occur is always the leading edge, regardless of whether it's low to high or high to low. And the second the second edge in the pulse is the trailing edge, and a pulse and, a, and an edge that goes from a high to a low is falling, and a pulse an edge that goes from a low to a high is a rising edge. Now what about some non-ideologies of flip-flops? Well actually we're just going to focus on one because I think that's the, the most important one unless you're getting into some really fine details of the way flip-flops are working and if you're looking, if you've got really fine uh, tuning that you need to do in terms of timings or de you know, dealing with really high frequency signals the, the, there are some other non-ideologies but the one we're going to focus on is propagation delay. Okay, so I'm going to draw a simple D flip-flop here. So we've got the D flip-flop with the D input We've got the clock input, and we've got our Q output. And um, we've got our D signal. I'm going to draw a timing diagram over here. We've got our clock, and we've got our Q. Okay, our clock is just this continuously running low, high, low, high, low, high signal. Let's do about three, three uh, clock cycles. And our D input is going to be mapped to the Q only on the rising edge of the clock. So let's say D is changing like this. So in an ideal flip-flop, on the rising edge of the clock, let's say Q starts at zero, at 1 up here. The rising edge at this exact point here, D is going to go from a 1 down to a 0. The value of D is going to get clocked into Q. And then over on this rising edge, D becomes a 1, so Q is going to become a 1 at that instant. And then it's going to stay at 1 because D stayed at 1. So this would be for a, an ideal flip-flop. But in reality, here's the non-ideal Q. What's going to happen? Well, D is going to, let's say again, Q starts at a high right at that point is the rising edge of the clock but there's going to be a little bit of a delay before the value of D which is a zero gets mapped over into Q so Q is not going to change until some clock cycle delay so that is the propagation delay a little bit hard to see on this scale here but here's my clock and here's the instant that Q changed so that time period right there is a propagation delay. How long it takes before the output changes from the time that the input has changed. Propagation delay. And we get the same thing on the low to high edge as well. Here's, here's the instant right there that the clock changes, but it's not till a little time later that Q is going to change and go to a high and then stay high. And of course, um, if you were to zoom in at that point right there, uh, well, you'd see the propagation delay. It's the time from here's my clock edge right there, and my clock edge, my clock edge occurs right at this point in time. Oops. There's my clock edge at that point in time, and there's the instant that the change occurs. So there's a, there's my propagation delay again. But also, if we were to zoom in right there, what we would find is that here's my Q going along, it's going to start to change, and, if, and it's not going to change instantaneously, it's going to take some time. So there again 
is my rise time. Propagation delay um, could be given the term TP, or maybe TPD. And and usually you're going to have to look up exactly that. If you're looking at a data sheet of a, um, a flip-flop or some kind of logic elements, all of these propagation delays and rise times and fall times are going to be are going to be identified 